Hello guys, I hope you all are doing well. I'll be teaching class 9 science fundamental units of life part 2. Part 1 I have already uploaded. You should go through that video first before going through this video. Now let's get started. Today I'll be teaching about cell organelles. How does cell divide? And some of the major differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So yeah, cell organelles, as I have stated earlier, like in human beings, we have got various organs present in our body, like that cell has also got various cell organelles present inside them. Each cell organelles inside the cell has got specific function to perform. And these functions helps the cell to survive. Now, let's go to Let's go through some of the major difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. As you can see in this video, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, DNA. In prokaryotes, DNA is naked. Eukaryotes, DNA, DNA bound to protein. In prokaryotes, DNA is circular. Eukaryotes, it's linear. In prokaryotes, there is no introns. Eukaryote usually has introns. Prokaryotes, no nucleus, no membrane bound, 70s ribosomes. Reproduction in pro prokaryotes is by binary fusion. As you can see, prokaryotes is a primitive version of organism, while eukaryotes are much more advanced. It has nucleus, it has membrane bound organelles. In eukaryotes, cell organelles are membrane bound, it means all the cell, cell organelles will have a membrane around them protecting the organelles while in prokaryotes there is no such membrane and uh, prokaryotes are smaller in size compared to eukaryotes you can pause this video if you want to go through it once again now endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is a large network of membrane bound tubes and sheets so it's like a network and Endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum is of two types smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum when you observe rough endoplasmic reticulum in a microscope you will see that at the surface of rough endoplasmic reticulum it has got ribosomes as we know ribosomes helps in production of proteins and this protein which is produced by ribosome it is carried to different parts of cell with the help of endoplasmic reticulum you see while in SCR which is also known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum it does not have ribosome in it so it cannot produce proteins instead it produces it manufactures fat molecules and lipids it's very important for cell functioning and some of these proteins and lipids which are made by endoplasmic reticulum helps in building the cell membrane and this process is known as membrane biogenesis I repeat the process in which a cell membrane is made with the help of lipid and protein is known as membrane biogenesis here's a picture of endoplasmic reticulum as you can see in rough endoplasmic reticulum has got ribosomes that gives it rough like appearance under a microscope in smooth endoplasmic reticulum there is no ribosome as you can see there is no blue colored structure present in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum area so it gives it smooth surface like area you can pause this video if you want to see it now there are two major functions of endoplasmic reticulum as i've stated earlier it forms a network like system so the one function is to serve as a channel channels of transport of materials so all so so whenever a cell or cell organelles are in need of protein, lipids or fats, 
endoplasmic reticulum serves as a channel but it helps in transporting them to that part of the cell where it is needed. Now another function of endoplasmic reticulum is that it provides, it helps different kinds of biochemical activities to happen at its surface. So various kind of biochemical activities which are very essential for a cell to survive happens on endoplasmic reticulum. So these two are one of the major functions of endoplasmic reticulum. Now Golgi apparatus, it was first described by Camillo. If you want to know more about Camillo Golgi, you should go through the book once. It's mentioned in the book, NCERT book. Now Golgi apparatus, it's a system of membrane bound vesicles arranged parallel to each other called cisterns. As you can see in this diagram, there are various membrane bound vesicles and they are arranged parallel to each other. We have cis phase at the very end and trans phase at the close end. And each parallel vesicles which we see are called cistern. As you can see in this diagram, this is the diagram of Golgi apparatus. Now, the membrane of Golgi are connected with the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum. The material which is synthesized near the endoplasmic reticulum is packaged and dispatched to various targets inside and outside the cell through the Golgi apparatus. So Golgi apparatus helps in packaging and dispatching the materials, the materials which is synthesized near the endoplasmic reticulum to various parts of the cell inside and outside the cell as per their requirement and some of the major functions of Golgi apparatus include the storage, modification and packaging of products in vesicles and in some cases complex sugars may be made from simple sugars in Golgi apparatus. So Golgi apparatus can even make complex sugars with the help of simple sugars. And it also helps in the formation of lysosome, which will be our next topic. As you can see, there are various functions mentioned in this. Now, lysosomes. Lysosomes are membrane bound sac filled with digestive enzyme. You see, lysosomes are like membrane bound sacs, and inside it, digestive enzymes are present. And these digestive enzymes are made by rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. Lysosomes are a kind of waste disposal system of a cell. So lysosomes are like a place where all the wastes of the cell are being deposited. And this helps to keep the cell clean by digesting any foreign material as well as borne out cell organelles. So lysosome has a very strong powerful digestive enzyme inside them so all the waste materials or foreign particles all are disposed inside the lysosomes and lysosome digests it and helps lysosome can even break complex substance into simple substance because it has as i mentioned earlier a powerful digestive enzyme you can see this is the diagram of lysosome It has hydrolytic enzymes inside them. You can pause this if you want to see it. Now, when a cell is di uh, damaged, lysosome may burst and enzyme digest their own cell. Therefore, lysosomes are also known as suicide bags. Suppose there is a damaged cell or cell that is not functional. So, lysosome is present inside the cell. And inside lysosome, a very powerful digestive enzymes are present. So if a cell is non-functional, the lysosome will burst, releasing all the powerful digestive enzyme and it will digest its own cell. And therefore lysosome are also known as now mitochondria. Mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. It has two membrane coverings. Mitochondria has two membranes outer membrane and inner membrane 
outer membrane is porous it has various pores present in them while the inner membrane is deeply folded we have seen this diagram the blue colored area is called matrix and you see at the outline of the matrix a yellow colored line that is inner membrane as you can see it's folded In the diagram, as you can see, mitochondria has its own ribosome and DNA, so it's capable of capable of producing its own protein. As I mentioned, ribosome helps in protein manufacture. And pause this if you want to see this video. Now, why is mitochondria called as the powerhouse of the cell? It is called so because it is the place where energy is created see it's energy required for various chemical activities needed for life is released by mitochondria in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate so and ATP helps in our body uses energy stored in ATP for making new chemical compounds and for mechanical work so all the physical activities which we do like running, walking, jumping, sitting, all this requires energy and this energy is stored in ATP. As you can see without ATP we cannot do the mechanical work. This is the reason why mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because it helps in production of ATP. This is the diagram now plastids plastids are present only in plants it's not pre present in plastids are of two types chromoplasts and leucoplast chromoplasts are colored plastids chromoplasts contain contains the pigment chlorophyll or also known as chloroplast as we all know chlorophyll helps in providing green color to the leaves and thus helps in photosynthesis so chloroplasts are very important for photosynthesis in plants besides green color chloroplast also has various different colors like yellow or orange you can see carrots are orange colored it's because of chloroplasts now leucoplasts are primarily organelles in which materials such as starch oils and protein now the structure of chloroplast the internal organization of chloroplast consists of numerous membrane layers embedded in a material called stroma as you can see this is the diagram coin like structures they are stacked one over the other it is present in stroma you can see number four stroma it is present inside stroma this is the diagram of chloroplast you can pause this video if you want to see it further vacuoles vacuoles are like storage sacks for solid or liquid contents vacuoles are small sized in animal cells while plant cells have very large vacuoles the central vacuole of some plant cell may occupy 50 to 90 percent of the cell volume. So vacuoles are place where you know for solid or liquid contents are stored. And in plant cell, vacuoles are of large size. While in animal cell, vacuoles are of very small size. And in some plant cell, you know, 50 to 90 percent of the entire cell space is taken by this central vacuole. In plant cell, this vacuoles are full of cell sap and it helps in providing turgidity and rigidity to the cell and many substance of importance in the life of the plant cell are stored in vacuoles like amino acids sugars various organic acids and some proteins so in plant cell besides providing a storage space it also helps in maintaining the structure of the plant cell because it provides turgidity and rigidity to the cell and in single celled organism like amoeba as I have mentioned what is single celled organism or unicellular the food vacuole contains the food items that the amoeba has consumed 
so in amoeba the food vacuole it has got food vacuole which helps in storing the food which it has eaten in some unicellular organism specialized vacuoles also play important roles in expelling excess water and some wastes from the cell so in some unicellular organism it also helps in excreting or expelling some excess water and some wastes from the cell so it has got various functions in various organisms in plant cell it provides sturdity and rigidity it also helps in storage of various important chemical compounds in amoeba it helps in storing the food it has got food vacuole while in some unicellular organism it helps in expelling excess water or some waste from the cell so these were some of the major cell organelles that is present inside the cell as you see each cell organelles as i have mentioned has got specific functions like mitochondria helps in energy production like powerhouse of the cell endoplasmic reticulum helps in transporting producing proteins and transporting lysosome helps in digesting various foreign materials golgi apparatus helps in packaging and dispatching various substances that is produced near endoplasmic reticulum and plastids which provides a green color to plants so each each cell organel has got specific functions and these specific functions helps the cell to survive so without cell organel functioning together the cell won't cell division the process by which new cells are made is called cell division so after a certain amount of time a cell gets old or when it has some injuries or some something is when the cell is not that functional new cells are formed to replace the old cells and this division cell division also helps in formation of gametes which is very essential for reproduction there are two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis the process of cell division by which most of the cells divide for growth is called mitosis so most of the cell divide by the process called mitosis and in mitosis each cell called mother cell divides to form two identical daughter cells so in mitosis a mother cell divides to form two identical daughter cells and this daughter cells have same number of chromosome as the mother cell it helps in growth and repair of tissues in organism so in mitosis a mother cell divides into two daughter cell and both the daughter cell has same number of chromosome which is present in mother specific cells of reproductive organs or tissues in animals and plants divide to form gametes which after fertilization give rise to offspring so some cells which are present in reproductive organs they divide and form gametes which as we know helps in fertilization now what is meiosis in meiosis two consecutive division occurs you know when a cell divides by meiosis it produces four new cells while in mitosis as we know it produces two new cells in meiosis it's four new cells and the number of chromosome which is present in those four new cells is half the number of chromosome which was present in mother cell while in mitosis the number of chromosome is same as what is present in the mother cell while in meiosis it's half the number of chromosome that is present in meiosis specific cells of reproductive organs or tissues in animals and plants divide to form gametes so some cells specific cells which are present in reproductive organ or tissues in plants and animals divide to form gametes as you know gametes are very important for fertilization which uses gives rise to offspring and in meiosis these gametes are used in meiosis there are two consecutive divisions and it produces four daughter cells as in mitosis which produces two daughter cell in meiosis it produces four daughter cell and 
those four daughter daughter cells are not identical to its mother cell in meiosis the number of chromosome which is present in daughter cell is half the number of chromosome that is present in mother cell as you can see in mitosis the number of chromosome was same in daughter cell as well as the mother cell while in meiosis the number of chromosome is half so these are some of the major differences between meiosis and mitosis human beings as we know reproduces by the process meiosis we have gametes so that was all about chapter 5 we came to know a lot about cell we came to know why cell is called as the basic unit of life what are the various important cell organelles and what are those what are the functions of those cell organelles how cell works how cell works and how it gets energy how it transports its product to various part of the cell so if you have any questions you can ask your respective teachers once the class reopens so 